Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Lazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. You guys, I have a really cool topic that we're going to talk about today. It's all about the microbiome. And I have an expert in the microbiome. Of course I do. I have Hannah Janabdar here to talk to us all the way from London. She is the co-founder and CEO of Juno Bio. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you. Hello. So happy to be here. It's it's awesome to talk to you. I mean, I'm, this is something that I describe as like the new frontier. And you would think like we've had vaginas for a really long time. So why should it be the new frontier? And I'm really happy that you're joining us to talk about it. But before we get into the topic, I just want to share with our listeners a little bit more about you. You have a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the Imperial College of London and a Master's in Science in Biochemical Engineering. And you researched microbiomes and you discovered that there was an opportunity to close the gender health gap and advance vaginal microbiome research. And you have this company, it's called Juno Bio, and you recently launched your vaginal microbiome test. And it's the first at-home comprehensive screen that allows women to receive insight into their full vaginal microbiome profile and what it means for their wellness. Welcome again. And the big question is, could your fertility issue be explained by an abnormal microbiome? But before I even get into that, Hannah, what is a microbiome? Please explain. It's a good place to start because I think a lot of people won't even have a clue what the word means. Uh, So microbiomes just really means community of microbes and microbes are bacteria and they're yeast and they're viruses. And a lot of people won't know that actually 56% of all the cells that make up who we are are microbial cells. They're not human cells. And these microbes have a huge impact on our health and our wellness. And they exist in our mouths, in our guts, in our skin, and in our reproductive tracts and, and vaginas. And so if you have heard of microbiomes, uh, you might have heard of them in the context of the gut, right? And you will know that they help you metabolize your food. You might have taken probiotics. But the microbes that live in the vagina are super important in women's health and fertility, it turns out. So they're communities of microbes. They live in and on us. And for the most part, they're really important for our health and wellness and behave and work with us. I'm really fascinated in what led you to research the microbiome because, you know, I have my own history. You know, my mom had miscarriages, so I was super interested in solving that problem for society as much as I can. What led you to be interested in researching microbiomes? Yeah, it's a funny one. So actually, my background is in biochemical engineering, and that means creating bioreactors and processes on scale, but and produ- so the production of microbial goods, etc. But one of the really fascinating problems is how do you scale up personalized microbial solutions. And my first immediate question was, why do you need personalized microbial solutions? Why on earth would you need this? And so I learned about microbiomes and the fact that you have these microbes in your body and that in order to really change them, you have to do it at sort of a tailored level for every single uh, person. So that's how I fell into microbiomes. And then I started working on a whole host of different ones. And back in sort of like five, six years ago, we had this huge explosion of both research and commercialization in things like the gut microbiome, the skin, the soil, etc. But no one was working on the vaginal microbiome, which was crazy to me because it was the most causative of the conditions that it's associated with. And it's it's implicated in over 30 women's health conditions that affect billions of women worldwide. And so for me, it was really just absolute shock that we're in the 21st century, that we have this technology, that it's being used for every other aspect of microbiomes that you can imagine, but but, but like a complete empty open space when it came to, came to women's health, which is, it's ridiculous, quite frankly. It is. And I'm particularly interested in how it can impact fertility. Can you speak on that for us? Yeah. So the research is ongoing 
and it's relatively new. As you say, it's like the next frontier of, of, of women's health and infertility as well. And so the, the research really falls into sort of two buckets, if you like, um, when it comes to fertility. One body of research really looks at the vaginal microbiome in the context of IVF success rates. And there are studies that show that women that have dysbiotic vaginal microbiome, so those are va vaginal microbiomes that are disrupted. They might be disrupted and cause bacterial vaginosis, which is a condition that can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. And when it's symptomatic, you have things like, you know, a foul odor, discharge, etc., discomfort, inflammation. But it showed, one of these studies, for instance, showed that women that have these dysbiotic or disrupted vaginal microbiomes fail their IVF route at 91% of the time. So there's a huge potential impact that it's having some having on, on something as, you know, as, as like big as IVF, because as you as you will know, it's emotional, financial, it's everything physical, and you want to really optimize it as much as you can. And the second sort of category of research that's happening is more in like more specifically in infertility so infertility can happen for a number of reasons as, as you will know and your audience probably knows as well um, and there are multiple factors that go into it um, but the vaginal microbiome is thought to have an impact on things like pelvic inflammatory disease and therefore also tubal factor infertility and so this is this means that it can have a role in causing um, damage, if you like, essentially to the reproductive organs um, and causing infertility as well. And we know for a fact that things like STIs, like chlamydia, gonorrhea, untreated, can lead to tubal factor infertility. But there is a growing body of research that is saying that the other microbes can also increase your risk of this and also potentially be causative of it as well. So those are at the minute the two areas that that we know about when it comes to fertility. And I couldn't agree with you more because I feel like when a patient is told she has a blocked tube, she all of a sudden shames herself into thinking that she's contracted some sexually transmitted infection from her partner because of some Google search that she did. And I'm like, no. It could be so many other different bacteria that could be causing this. And it could also be something else like endometriosis. So please, for those of you who are listening, don't shame yourself. If you have a blocked tube into thinking that it's some STI and it could just be from another type of bacteria, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, there is a growing body of research that is thinking that, yes, there are other types of bacteria that could be causative elements here for sure. And I think obviously it's so hard in this world not to shame ourselves because we're constantly shamed and it's constantly sort of ingrained in ourselves, but microbes are part of us and it's a taboo topic even without talking about STIs and talking about yeast infections, etc. And I think the more that we can move towards being open and knowing that the, the stigma should be removed and, and we're all here to remove it, that the better we'll all be for it. Yeah, so so the so when when we started, we ran a study called the the Juno study, and it was a huge study, um, one of the biggest of its kind, IRB approved, and over a thousand women from all over the U.S. took part and built one of the richest repositories of vaginal microbiome. So this is like what it, like what what microbes can even really exist in the vagina, and what does it mean for women's health? And that informed the first product that we have, which is a Juno Wellness test for the vaginal microbiome, and it's a test that is. It, it's a test based on next generation sequencing. So it's a big, big term, but essentially what it boils down to is that we can give you the full bacterial and yeast profile in, in your vaginal swab. So if you go online, you order a kit, you get uh, something in the mail, and it's a really simple sort of swab, much like you know the COVID test that we've been doing, but instead of putting it in your nose, you put it in your vagina for 20 seconds. Um, and then you send it back to us, we process it, and you get a full breakdown of what the bacteria that live in your vagina is and what the yeast that live in your vagina is. What it means for you in your specific context and what your best next steps can look like. And then how do you know if what you did to treat it worked? Like what do you, re what do you recommend based on the research that you've done? Yeah. So, I mean, depending on where you are, so some women will get a test and their vaginal microbiome looks 
amazing nothing to be done all good all good and dandy sometimes though it's there's a very clear like you should really follow up with your doctor get a confirmatory diagnostic get treatment etc and that treatment can look like antibiotics sometimes and then sometimes it's more things that you can do to sort of support your general wellness and there are things that you can do in terms of better practices so you know a lot of women when they do have recurrent infections or when it's not, you know, happy down there, if you like, they will, they will go and unfortunately use things like douching, douching sort of products, and like you absolutely shouldn't. So there are things that you can do um, in terms of avoiding that, but also um, you can use probiotics and prebiotics that are more tailored to you um, and your unique context to sort of support your your general wellness. So it is very dependent um, on your context what your solution will look like. Right. And I tell people your vagina is like a self-cleaning oven. You don't need to teach, right? You, I was going to say your vagina is absolutely a, a self-cleaning oven, but when it goes awry, then it then it's very much not a self-cleaning oven. And what you really do need is dedicated clinicians and tests that can really help you get back on track. And I think that's where, you know, there's a huge gap and where communities like ours uh, really go for things like Juno. So maybe there's a warning little alert on your oven that says, need Juno, must come help, bring in the maintenance crew to get everything perfect. I love it. Okay, great. So um, where can people find your test? So you can find us at juno.bio um, and you can order your test directly from us. There's no faff, there's no whatever. You go straight to our website and you can you can order it and get it in the mail in a couple of days. Okay, excellent. Well, is there anything you want to tell our audience about the microbiome and the vagina for them to remember so that they remember this uh, interview today? What would I say? I would say number one, your vaginal microbiome is important. For the most part, it's protective. Sometimes it misbehaves, but we're here for you when it does. <laughs> I love that quote. I think we'll, uh, I'll make that into a t-shirt. Little, I see little Juno um, baseball caps, Juno bio baseball caps. Can I please have one of those t-shirts? I'd, I'd wear it all the time. I'll send it to you. Well, I think I think your test would go well with my Egg Whisper pants. I don't know if you've seen them. They have a crotchless opening. You should look that up, eggwhisperpants.com. Awesome. Well, thank you. So for those of you who are interested in Hannah's test, it's juno.bio. Um, I have my patients doing it. I'm getting the results back. I'm finding the results to be extremely helpful. And I hope that, you know, if you're interested, that you guys do the same as well. For those of you who don't know, I have the Tushy Method, tushymethod.com, the five tests that you need to do to understand your fertility, tubes, uterus, sperm, hormones, and your genetics. And Hannah, I think I'm going to add your vaginal microbiome to that list as well. Do you agree? Absolutely. Awesome. And wait, one more question. What about men? You know, men, men should get their microbiomes tested. There is no test right now for them, but I hope in a year or two, we will have something for men too. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Okay. Well, thank you, Hannah, for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Amazing. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 